TVs and projectors have been for the longest time the only way to watch movies on a big screen. But more recently, a new technology has become very popular which aims to bring the best of both TVs and projectors together, and that is the Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. These projectors aim to give you the biggest image possible, with picture quality comparable to some of the best TVs on the market. But do they really live up to the hype? Well, to help us answer that question, Bowmaker was nice enough to send over their Polaris 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. It's the first UST that we've had the opportunity to review, and we're really excited to test it out. So if you want to see how well this projector performs, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. Alright, so as I mentioned, today we're going to be taking a look at the Bowmaker Polaris 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. And just in case you're not familiar with what a short throw projector is or does, it's basically a projector that can be placed close to a wall or screen and can produce a very large vibrant 4K image in a much smaller area compared to a long throw projector. As you can see here, the Polaris can produce a 100 inch image from just 10 inches away from the wall and a 150 inch picture from 21 inches away. Now of course, just having a large image isn't the only thing special about this projector because it can also produce a very vibrant, super clear 4K image that looks absolutely stunning in person. The Polaris is able to do this by using the Texas Instruments .47 inch DMD chip to produce a native 4K image with 8.3 million pixels. Now this isn't a native 4K chip, but instead it uses pixel shifting technology to create the 8.3 million pixels needed to produce a native 4K image on the screen. This, combined with the triple lasers used in the Polaris, gives some of the best looking images that I've seen from a projector. The intensity of the red, green, and blue lasers can automatically be adjusted for brighter and more vivid colors and mixed together to achieve 107% coverage of the BT2020 color gamut which is impressive for a consumer projector. You also get a peak brightness of 2500 ANSI lumens and a contrast ratio of 2000 to 1. And because of the tri-laser design, there's no need for a color wheel, which means far less chance of seeing the DLP rainbow effect. In fact, the whole time that I was evaluating this projector, I never noticed any. Of course, some people are more sensitive to this, but I'm pretty sure that most of us would never see it with this projector. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at the outside of the Polaris. And I think that Bowmaker did a great job with the overall design, appearance, and build quality of this projector. Starting at the front, it has these small holes that allow for the sound of the 10 watt speakers to play through. And they actually sound quite good. Of course, they're not going to compare to a full surround sound setup, but they are much better than most TVs I've heard. Around the back, you get two HDMI 2.0 ports capable of handling up to 4K 60Hz. And one of these are actually HDMI ARC. We also get an Ethernet port, a digital audio out, a 3.5mm input, a USB 2.0 port, a couple of service ports, and an AC input socket. On the sides of the unit, you have vents for the four cooling fans, two intake and two exhaust. These fans are actually really quiet while running, and you really can't even tell they're on unless you're within a couple of feet of the projector. You also get another USB port here, which is really a nice convenient feature. On the bottom, we have four adjustable feet that can be locked into place once you get the projector all set up. There are also mounting points so you can mount the projector on the ceiling, but just be aware that if you do this, you'll have to invert the image in the projector's settings. On top, you have the two eye care sensors that automatically shut off to protect your eyes from damage if you get too close. You also get a power button, and of course, this is the side of the projector where the lens actually projects the image from. And when it comes to projectors, the lens is probably one of the most important parts in the video path. In fact, it doesn't matter how good every other part is inside, if it's all run through a bad lens, you're going to end up with a low quality image that just doesn't look good. But the one thing that we haven't gone over yet is the Ricoh lens that Bowmaker chose to go with for this projector. And if you're into photography at all, you'll know that Ricoh makes some very high quality lenses under the Pentax name, which are very well respected among enthusiasts. 
And this, in my opinion, is a pretty good indication that Bowmaker didn't cut corners, but instead used some of the best quality parts available for most of the crucial areas of the projector. The included remote has a very ergonomic feel to it, and it seems to be built really well. The front panel is made of this high quality anodized aluminum and its simple layout makes it easy to use while still offering enough functionality to adjust everything needed on the projector. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any backlighting, which is kind of annoying for a projector where you're generally going to be using it in the dark most of the time. All right, so as I mentioned, this was our first experience with an ultra short throw laser projector. So we had no idea what it would take to get this set up properly. And to be completely honest, it was a bit harder than I expected it to be. I spent a lot of time moving the projector in and out from the wall, changing the height compared to the screen, adjusting the feet, and finally after about 20 minutes, I had it looking pretty good. Now this won't be too bad if you just plan on setting the projector up once and leaving it in the same spot. But if you plan on moving the projector frequently, just be aware that you'll have to go through the same setup process every time, and that could get a little old fast. Another issue that I had was in order to adjust the projector, the eye care sensor had to be shut off so I could see the changes that I was making, which meant every time I moved my head over the laser, I got to see just how bright the lasers really are. But luckily with a decent amount of retinas left and the projector all set up, I was able to start enjoying the amazing picture it was throwing on my 120 inch Elite screen. We wanted to see how good the picture was right out of the box, so we didn't adjust anything except for the color temperature, and the first thing we noticed was just how bright the image was. It literally looked brighter than my 85 inch Sony TV, which is no slouch when it comes to brightness. Something else that really stood out was just how bright and vivid the colors were without looking oversaturated or overdone. All the colors, including skin tones, looked very natural and realistic, and I'm sure if I had spent a little more time adjusting, it would have looked even better. Black levels were also really good for a projector. Of course, they're not OLED quality, but I would say that they're much better than what we were expecting, and I suspect that the excellent black levels are partly responsible for the very good contrast while watching standard SDR content. Unfortunately, HDR viewing was a bit underwhelming. It still looked decent, but seemed a little dark for my taste. Upping the brightness helped a little bit, but quickly started to look washed out. And this is pretty common for most projectors, since they lack the light output to achieve true HDR levels. Gaming on this projector was also very satisfying, even though it doesn't support some features found in newer gaming consoles like VRR and 120Hz output, it still produced a very enjoyable experience. And as you can imagine, gaming on a 120 inch screen with the PS5 not only looked amazing, but it was also so immersive that it just seemed to pull me even further into the games. And I think that's one of the biggest pluses to going with a large screen and a short throw projector like the Polaris. It's just a combo that's hard to beat in my opinion. Moving on to the interface and operating system, the Polaris comes with Android 6 out of the box, which runs on the built-in quad-core ARM processor, along with three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. It does a decent job at giving you basic navigation through the apps, but it would have been nice to see a full-blown Android TV install included with this projector. And that's why we recommend just going with something like the Nvidia Shield, which is our streamer of choice, or some other type of external streaming device that you may prefer. The user interface is actually quite nice and does a good job of allowing you to customize your image settings with all the usual adjustments. It also has expanded color correction settings that allow you to fine tune the colors even further so you can get it looking exactly the way you like. You also have the ability to adjust the light source, the audio for the built-in speakers, your network settings, which can either be Wi-Fi or Ethernet, Bluetooth settings, and a general settings tab for setting your language, time zone, system updates, etc. All right, so it's probably pretty obvious that we really like this projector, and we're more than happy to give it a good recommendation. With that said, there are a few issues that we feel need to be brought up. The first thing is a lack of any kind of keystone adjustment. And although keystone adjustments can have a negative effect on picture quality, it would have made setup a lot faster and easier. 
We would have also liked to have seen a focus adjustment because we did notice a slight blurring in the upper corners of the screen on images of 120 inches and above, but this shouldn't be a problem with smaller images. It would have also been great if the projector came with full Android TV so you wouldn't have to rely on any external source for streaming. We don't think this is really a big issue since we already had the shield, but it's still an added cost that you need to consider. And finally, it would have been nice to get HDMI 2.1. But honestly, if you're just going to be watching movies and casually gaming, then we really don't think you can go wrong with this projector, especially at its current sell price of $19.99. If you want to check it out on Bowmaker's website, I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description to their website where you can see their information about it. And also, I'll leave a link to the AVS forum discussion on this projector so you can hear more about the Polaris from other people who own them. And with that said, I think it's just about time to wrap up this video. We had a lot of fun testing this one and we're really surprised at what Bowmaker is able to bring to the table with their high-end ultra short throw laser projector. But I want to hear what you guys think. Have you ever used a UST projector and do you think the Polaris might be the right model for you? Well, be sure to let us know what you think down in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.